This is episode 133 of the XY Podcast with Grant Miller. Does that name ring a bell? If you're in the XY Facebook group, you absolutely would have seen Grant's name pop up on more than one occasion. He's become the somewhat unofficial first home super saver scheme expert, but more than that, he's one of our most active and supportive members. He leans on the XY community for support when he has a question or wants to spark a constructive discussion, and he continually provides a ton of value to others. Grant joined the XY community around the same time he decided to take the leap of faith and set up his own advice business from scratch. It's been a journey, and in this conversation with Adrian from XY, Grant walks us through what it's been like setting up his business, how he had to overcome the sales stigma as an advisor, how he found his niche, and what he would do differently if he started again. It's episodes like this which bring the digital XY community to life. If you're in the XY Facebook group, I'm sure many of you feel like you probably know Grant, even though you've never actually met in real life. If you've recently gone out on your own as a financial advisor, if you're contemplating taking the leap of faith into self-employed life, or if you just want to hear what other advisors are doing in their business and career, you'll love this episode. This podcast is brought to you by Salesforce, blazed new trails to richer client relationships with the world's number one CRM. Salesforce has designed the Financial Services Cloud to help you make every interaction personalized through rich client profiles centered on personal goals and pivotal life events. You can nurture deeper relationships with proactive tracking and event alerts that remind you to reach out when clients need you the most. Supercharge your productivity by managing client engagements, household relationships, and financial life goals all from the one connected platform. It's the world's number one CRM imagined just for wealth management. Salesforce is excited to partner with XY Advisor to discuss how you can build richer client relationships and unlock loyalty. Hey, it's a pleasure yeah. to have you on. Thanks, mate. One Thanks of the, um, we pull up the, the Facebook stats every now and again, and um, some people are more active than others. And you, you, you made the list a couple of times. And it's a great, what, what great kind of ranking. What kind of ranking am I sitting? Oh, just ooh, top, top 10 or is that? Um, I think, yeah, definitely top 10. Oh, yeah, solid. Yeah, man. Nice. That's, that is that is the rank of a contributor to the community. So it's, uh, it's solid. I'm sure everyone's thankful for the bits you're adding in and the, the yeah, ideas you're throwing out I don't know how relevant there. is. I mean, half of it's probably gifts, but... Um, oh, mate. The gifts. Contributions are contributions, I guess. Uh, there's a lot. I, I do. I, I really appreciate the subtle um, uh, undertones of uh, comedy that go on. Um, Shane Black. I was about uh, to say, I'm no Shane Black. <laughs> <laughs> the king of the dad jokes. Oh, uh, mate, he just he rocks it. There's nothing really I got on, on him. Mate, why, why be so serious? That's that's <laughs> what I like to say. Yep. But it's good to have you on, man. We had, um, yeah, it, it, this is post, uh, post the event last night, which is Cracker. Yep. Poor, poor Grant had a had um, child um, child duties, a uh, couple of kids, so it's uh, yeah, mate, three year old's birthday yesterday, yeah. so yeah, rocked up well after everyone, so I'm gonna have to jump on the live and, and watch it all. Yeah, it's but good I heard there was awesome recording. content though, so we have to. Oh, you'll love it because yeah. it's. Um, I think I think for some people it's a bit um, it's a bit of a shock to the system. Like we actually had three digital businesses up there that they actually don't see clients face to face at all uh, yeah, solid. or very minimal so um, yeah really cool stuff a lot of a bit of tech but not too much tech it was actually more about um, how they convey their messages to these niche markets that they're dealing with which is yeah solid well, ideally easy. yeah I'd want to be moving to online maybe not exclusively mm. but I want to be able to target you know the entire nation kind of thing so I like it yeah ambitions yeah why not <laughs> so uh, I'm just trying to think because you you started your new business mm. as as you're in the group is that right was yeah. that the journey because yeah, yeah. I'm remembering I'm remembering a bit back you had a post where it was um, when you were actually setting out to start your own thing yep yeah so yeah so I'll give you a, I guess a, a bit of background around yeah where, totally maybe um, my my brief history mm. um, so yeah I was working for, for a place and I um, was kind of looking at going out and doing my own thing like you mentioned earlier a couple of kids wife mortgage you know she's full time home duties kind of thing so I was like jumping out on your own with no income is a bit of a risky venture mm. so I went with the AMP practice startup offer which at the time was a 12 month lease mm. and then you commit to maybe buying it at 12 months um, so anyway so I had, had put off my resignation for a couple of months because I had a four week notice period I specifically put it off to 
the week before Easter so that I'd have four weeks where I had back-to-back public holidays. Whereas if I resigned four weeks earlier, I'd get nothing. Yeah, you might as well so make the most of the, the wage environment well, while you can. Well, no public holidays for a few <laughs> months. And here in Queensland, that's Labor Day was last week. Oh. I think it was last week. So we had Easter Friday, Easter Monday, yep. Anzac Day, Labor Day public holidays. And if I'd resigned what I initially intended to, I would have got none of that. Yeah. So I'll, well, I'd, I'll, I'll hold out for it. Yeah. Keep, keep it going. It did, the funny thing is, like, I've been self-employed for so long, you, you see how, like, the majority <laughs> of the population just gets so excited over this period. I'm like... It's just a nice chilled out time to do a bit of work. Like it's <laughs> with everyone else, no one's really bugging you as much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. And I, I hear on like the Friday, and they're like, "Oh, any plans for the long weekend?" I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, "Oh, there's a public holiday on Monday." Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> what are they? <laughs> oh, no. So um, yeah, left there. Then they took a while to appoint me uh, as an AR, and then even longer to to give me the book of clients. So I was off with pretty much nothing for a few months. Um, did that for four or five and then had an offer with another group here on the Gold Coast and we worked together for a couple of months but just didn't quite align. Uh, and then it was like, all right, back to where my initial fear was of working for myself was mm. like, I've left, I took ages to get appointed, get my register of clients from AMP with my income and now I've gone through all these hurdles and now I'm stuck. I've no longer licensed to give advice because it just didn't work out. And where to from here so mm. yeah jumped on um, with Synchron yep. and they were really understanding of the situation they, they were like why so many dealer groups in such a short period of time mm. uh, which was a fair enough kind of concern and I was like here's my story like a two page narrative about what had happened and they were like man that sucks mm. but you seem like the kind of advisor that kind of could mesh well with our um, philosophy I guess so mm. yeah, yeah we'll, we'll put you on yeah, they were great. So community. that was yeah, yeah. So that was um, February last year. So that was kind of where I started completely from scratch. Um, but yeah, the the community on XY was massive for for jumping out and just t- kind of tapping into the knowledge that exists there. Mm. And now, I mean, you can go on search function and search, and you could be there all day. Just there's a lot. There's oh, a lot of yeah. content in there. Yeah, there's heaps. But yeah. I found it heap really useful because I think there was only a thousand or less members at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, just a nice little community to jump on and be like, hey, what do you guys do about this? Because you know, I know what I'm doing as an advisor, but now I've got a business owner hat. Mm. What am I doing? So yeah, trying to trying to navigate my way from there. Yeah, those are but, so yeah. the the people that have gone through your journey that have been in the group. That's 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 where we get really stoked how how much of an impact the group's had because it is such a crucial time and you're learning. Yep. so much at that time and there's so many things that are coming up that are brand new and you're like shit what do I do with this like, yeah 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 big time well before where I might have had structured processes or whatever to go through and then I was like alright now I've got to do that myself i got to put together my own forms for these different things mm. and I don't like that fact find I've got to get approval now to have a custom fact find yeah, so yeah. I spent a while just customising my own fact find and there's a mesh of what I wanted what I actually use mm. And three or four different dealer groups worth of things that I kind of just piled together. And, yep. Yeah, getting rid of the crap that is Best completely irrelevant. Oh, mate, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so since, how, yeah. how long in, since you started now? What's uh, so as in with with Synchron or yeah that that business? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was February last year. Okay. That I jumped in there, so okay, so a year on and a bit. Yeah, yeah. So this month I'll see my first renewal commission on on insurance, which yep. will be a nice thing to see. Yeah, you're so. like, oh, business, <laughs> a sustainable business. Yeah, renewal, oh, <laughs> awesome. It's renewed. Yeah, I'm getting paid for that. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, but you know, that's all part of it. Part of doing all those review clients are starting to come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, finally pushing through FDSs and stuff like that too. Which, Has it been like I guess because when you're starting out, like. All you're worried about is that sort of initial... Oh, man, I've got to get, get paid, get my yeah, eyes yeah. on. Yeah, but otherwise... Now, yeah. is, it, is a bit of a renewal of... Um, renewal, renewal. <laughs> <laughs> is a bit of a sort of restart of that, oh, shit, what's my ongoing service proposition looking like? Is it... Or yeah, have you that's... already thought about that sufficiently in, in, when you've come into this... this you now, you, you're going into um, ongoing service territory. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I keep in somewhat regular contact with clients anyway because it's Mm -hmm. not like I've got 100 clients to look after so I'll kind of just send them a text give them a call send them an email and just be like hey what's going on 
Um, should have done more of it in terms of like um, the protecting your super package about the insurance that's being cut out of super from yeah. 1st of July. So I sent a video out to them. It's the first time I've done it. Yeah. I'm like, Man, I should have done more of these because it gets your face there and totally yeah you know, get gets it out there. But so you can see yourself doing a bit more video like that. Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah. Um, yeah, good old loom. Looms, jumping on that. It's good stuff. Yep. So I, I had to redo it three or four times. And now it's counted. It's not unlimited free anymore. And mm. you know, I lap up all the free stuff. I have to. Well, there's a couple of other options. So, you just rotate free trials, new email addresses. Like, <laughs> I've got my own domain. Why don't I just cycle through? I can yeah. have up to 100 <laughs> email addresses. Man, I'll be loaded. But, Get all those uh, free credits. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll know the difference. But, um, but yeah, so yes, in terms of now reassessing that on a on very wholesome basis to be mm. like, all right, what real value am I adding? Mm. Um, especially with ASIC now saying what specific services, not just the intangibles, mm. what are the tangibles you're doing? Yeah, have you itemized your FTS and what sort yeah, of things yeah. are you doing to... Um, well, I've only had one FTS, another okay. one coming through in the next week. Yeah. But um, so yeah, that was, yeah, with that client, you know, heaps of emails, heaps of contact, you know, a few calls along the way, mm. um, a couple of adjustments on things. So easily justifiable in the FTS. Well, you so think so. Here's the specific, yeah, well, <laughs> um, without any additional charges, you know, here's the specific services that I've provided you yeah, over yeah. this period without charging you anything additional. So mm. I think that was pretty straightforward. Um, but... Yeah, definitely now reassessing all of that. Um, and yeah, a few months ago, I put on heavy in the group, Steve Salvia yeah. as a coach. So that's been massively helpful. Oh, so you've been working with Steve? Yeah, yeah. We jumped on. He um, he was like, mate, it's Christmas holidays, but if you want to jump on, I'll get you on. I'll get you, you know, the onboarding stuff started so that at least we can catch up in January. So it was like the 22nd of December. He's like, mate, I'm going to be off over Christmas, but if it's urgent, let me know. Um, so yeah, jumped on and kind of went through that process. He's got some good and, stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's solid. So that's been helping me. Yeah, because really... you get some good structure and framework to work. Yeah, on. well, like I said before, is being self-employed versus you know processes and everything already in place. Is it's now like all right, well, now I've got a framework to work through. Mm. Yeah, you know, how to have better meetings with clients, how to convert more, how to justify the fee. Um, you know, for the first time since I've started is you know the initial consult is at no charge mm. but now charging you know engagement fee which I never be, never did before so getting the confidence to do that and the right um, the right method I yep. guess to do that as well yeah totally so yeah there's there's those sort of things that like to have and my oldest brother's a business coach too okay and he works with financial planners okay um, but I was like I'm not gonna put my brother on as a coach he, I just don't think I Has could he, work with... Have you sort of interacted with him around what you're doing at all? Or? A little bit. And he gave me some guidance, stuff around his marketing stuff, um, which I probably haven't invested enough time in to get his take on things. Yeah. But his methodology, his process of doing things, and I think his personality isn't in line with kind of how I'd want to work. Okay. Seems pretty laid back. Like when it's business, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do this. But he's, you know, you can have a laugh with him and... Yeah, he'll put you in your place. Yeah, he loves what he's uh, doing. He's, yeah, so in that essence, you know, there was that, you know, leeching off his experience, but also that personality type thing where, you know, that's what gel. And that's important. where I was like, if I'm going to put on a coach, someone I've got to get along with and someone I trust to be able to... It's, it's a parallel it. to the advisor-client Yeah, big connection. Yeah. yeah, and so kind of watching and he'll be like, did you notice I did this? That's what I'm telling you to do with your clients. And I was like, you did do that, Steve. Sneaky, <laughs> mate. Like, just these little subtle things like he's a master salesman. Yeah, and, yeah. and my initial experience in financial services was with a basically a glorified sales machine type business, yeah, okay. um, which just heavily misaligned with my values and everything. So mm. I was, from that experience, I was like, sales sucks. Yeah. Like you're all just crap. You know, before I even got in the industry, all I heard was, you know, you're just a glorified insurance salesman. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And then, yeah, so I, I heavily wanted to steer away from, I guess, a, a stigma of sales. It's that, there's that but, challenge where you, you, there's extremes. It's yeah, yeah, of, big time. Like you, you're looking at um, sales done in a bad way and um, I guess the solution that's been sold. Mm. Not being, not really aligning with what you think is valuable. Yeah, and and then there's a space where 
what what's being sold is really good and valuable and matches the clients. Yeah. And why not sell it well? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. Mm. Is is now being able to say, well, it's not necessarily sales is a bad thing it's being able to present the value that you're able to add mm. and if you're able to add legitimate value which I didn't see there which is kind of where mm. I had that yeah you get those blockers that come into yeah place, I was so like, like I don't I don't align with that but now to be like well I, I do add real tangible value to these client situations so if I can't present that value to them they're not going to want to pay me and therefore they're not going to see the benefits of it so that's really all sales is to me now is being able to really articulate and have them understand um, and internalize the value that is on the table. Yep. And if they turn it away, then that's on them. Yep. Um, so now I'm... What's that, that, at this stage yeah. of your business, it's so hard to say no to like prospective business. Yeah. It's so hard. Like yep. it's, you, it's like almost impossible. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're sitting there going, shit, money... Um, Oh, they're not, they're not the coolest people to work with, but money. Um. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, you would have seen this if you searched my name on XY probably. If you probably I've never done it, but I'd be interesting, interested to see searching my name accompanied by like um, Centrelink or Aged Care or something like that. Yeah, I'm sure there'd be a bit there. Cause, well, because I think every time one of those posts comes up, I'm like, here's why I don't deal with Centrelink. Yeah. Like, this is precisely why. Yeah, geez, so I, she's, I have had to the turn the post from uh, what Liz Hughes and oh, mate, like, what she goes yeah. through. She's a she's I've, a trooper. I've had yeah, I've had one one inquiry on that front, mm. and was like, no, nah, this isn't me. And I actually referred to Liz as well. Um, I can't remember if it went ahead or eventuated, but it was yeah. like this is out of my space. Yeah, what do you you think? Because she deals with that stuff all the time. So yeah, I'm like if someone's going to deal with this one, I don't want to have to keep up with the rules and deal with Sendlink. Mm. And if I want to add value, I can see someone who's a specialist really works heavily in that field to be like, work with them. And if there's anything else that maybe I can assist with, great. Mm. Otherwise, this is your, your person. But otherwise, yeah, it's like, man, I just got to get paid, which, which I did find actually resulted, I think, in me not acquiring a couple of clients earlier as well. Okay. Where I was like, yeah, look, full scope. You know, I see all this and they were just kind of like, well, for the time being, can we just do this? And I was like, like yeah, no, 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 ties into this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it turned from one thing and I was like that and then it kind of just yeah. pushed them away. Yeah. Um, so I had a couple of those which could have been you know, really good prospective clients mm. and I was just, I saw the value in full scope mm. but I didn't respect their boundary of saying, yes, you know, maybe down the track we'll work on that mm. but let's just do this now. Yeah, it's a challenge between going, you can see the need stuff to be done and like it, yeah it can be frustrating not to address that because you can see what needs to be done but yeah I think yeah. a lot of people have, uh, have it's it's quite evident that being able to sort of maybe scope things and, um, and also the compliance pressures can be quite um, yeah. you're like shit um, if I don't do anything about that then there's a risk but obviously it just comes down to just making sure they're well aware of those risks and, yeah. and noting everything down as well yeah. like, I've had, um, and one of my initial things is um, when I went down the initial route is I, I went with My Prosperity, mm-hmm. which was, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month. And I was like, holy crap, this is expensive. But I saw a huge value potential in the, the platform. But I was starting off, I had no clients. Yeah. So like, what am I going to do with Talking this? Talking out the money. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah, so I went Good idea, ages. but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I see massive potential value in working with clients mm-hmm. as long as they use it and whatever else like there's a lot of functionality there mm. um, but in the end I was like well this is useless but one of the things I, I did want to do was like just exclusive um, like money coaching kind of thing mm. as its own standalone thing in addition to now I'm trying to focus that as well into all clients kind of get that as part of the process yeah totally are you breaking it down away from um, like that's a separate service that you do yeah, yeah. So now I've got a few just exclusively money coaching. And is that still outside the license regime or? Um, I, they're brand new. So I've put still them. Still working it out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe uh, but maybe I talk some, to Lee Shadell. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I know some who, who set it up through like a separate company mm-hmm. and they kind of just run that and yep. the license separately. Yeah, there's the options around that. The other one that is that because of the, if you're, if you're only working with um, uh, simple deposit products, there's often a lower 
requirement around the compliance framework. Yep. So it, it could be like a, a, a detailed letter almost that yeah, yeah. like an ROA sort of thing yeah, yeah. around just bank accounts and splitting up the bank accounts or whatever it is. Yep. So, but it does depend on the licensee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but, um, yeah, but yeah, the separate so business. Was, and, yeah, so that was a, a cool thing now to be like, well, let's now set this up and really just focusing purely on that. Mm. Um, yeah. So I've kind of like, yeah, I watched a few webinars and done a few things and kind of created my own okay. framework, which yeah. might be a simplistic version of it all. But, yeah. you know, segregating needs, wants, and then saying, you know, where do you want to save potentially on this? Mm. Understanding, therefore, like what's your savings capacity? Yep. And so I met with a, a couple earlier in the week where, you know, the savings capacity, they thought, you know, we're going backwards or we're just going nowhere. And mm-hmm. it turned out based on what they said, and I was like, don't say what you think you spend or what you ideally would like to. Yep. Tell me what you actually spend. Um, and so it ended up being about 16 and a half grand in, wow. in terms of savings capacity. So I yep. was like, well, you should be able to save this. So now let's you know, put a framework in place so that you can actually do that. And that's you know, after my 200 a month kind of thing. Was, mm. you know, like You can afford to pay me, guys. So you'll be right. So. Justifying the fees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. But being able to tangibly say, realistically, you should be able to afford this. So before I just had a one pager in my fact find really detailed on mm. expenses. And now well, what do you do with the, that? Like what's... Yeah, what's well, that just a, tells me what's, mm. what's your expenses and then I compare that to your income and that sets then the budget to say yeah you can afford this Mm. and for compliance I can tick the box to say yes I've documented that your expenses are lower than your income and there's a gap there that Mm. you can afford this whereas now it's like taking it next level and saying you know you can afford you've got this capacity here now let's make it work Um, how's it how's it felt um, sort of beyond that extra level oh it's awesome yeah Yeah, like the the level of satisfaction to see uh like an immediate benefit mm. is awesome. And for them to feel confident as opposed to here's your spending, here's this, and now you know, we're segregating your needs and wants. And so if, if worse came to worse, you've got your needs there, you can scrap the wants, and this is what you can afford to live on. So yeah. therefore, let's get you know, savings set aside for that. If you want just your income protection, if it's too expensive to cover all of your income, let's cover those just expenses kind of thing. Will it cover that? So it's helping me justify kind of the other areas as yeah, well. Yeah, totally. It's, it's, it's all in a space that they see, they understand, it's tangible stuff that their their life essentially. Yeah, yeah, big time. Do you, is this where your other superpower of, of growing to know, um, of identifying um, good value uh, purchases and discounts oh, comes into nice. play? Because Dude, I can yeah. see it, I can see it really playing. So for those out there that's yeah, having man. a good chat with Grant, and he, he can pick a deal. He can pick a deal <laughs> and he... He does it well. He, what, what was that deal we were talking about? Oh, the, yeah, for my phone. So I yeah. pay 13 bucks a month. Yeah. And so 39 bucks over 90 days and I get 8 gig of data. I work from home, use the Wi-Fi all day, so internet's no drama. Mm. Um, others might need more, I need less. Yeah. Um, but the real secret, and I won't take full credit to it. Ah, I claim it. There's a guy actually here on the Gold Coast. <laughs> He's called The Spending Hacker. Okay. And I started following him a couple of years ago. Yeah. And like switch my internet, switch my phone, um, you know, switch my electricity, did a bunch of stuff. And I'm sitting here telling clients like, you know, if you can, based on your tax rate, you're paying a third of your income in tax. So, you know, if you can save a hundred bucks, saves you 150 bucks. Yeah. If you're earning 30 bucks an hour, you know, you've just saved yourself five hours of work. Or yeah. if you've worked five more hours, you can pay yourself to do something else. So I'm telling people this all the time and I've always been huge on saving money and trying to find deals, but this kind of... When I started following his stuff, I was like, holy crap, there's more that I can do. And I'm still on the Optus network. I'm not on Vodafone, which is sometimes third world reception. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so I'm still getting good value on the things I was spending money on anyway, yeah, yeah. but getting a good deal out of it. Totally. So, well, I, think it's, uh, I think it's really good from a walk the walk sort of standpoint. Um, walk the talk that you're sort of seeing there in front of clients, talking yeah. about their expenses. Yeah. Hey, give cash it, back on give them a bit of grief about stuff. some of their expenses and like, yeah, a bit think, like here's your, how you can save on it. Like mm-hmm. I even do you goes, bring your stories of what you've been doing? Does that come into play? Yeah, a lot? yeah, yeah. All the time. I can't help it. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Guys, you know the deal that you can get here. Like, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is outside the scope of financial advice. Yeah. Just so you're aware. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I'd like to share some insight with you to help you save more money as well. Mm. 
and you know, follow this guy anyway, the spending hacker. He'll you know, keep you updated, but here's some things that I'm aware of. And you know, even other things like um, I use a website called cashrewards.com.au okay. for online purchases like Groupon. You typically get 5% cash back on it. Yep. Um, you know, menu log for anyone who does like to eat out. Mm-hmm. Um, just so one of my stories is we we're looking for a new Dyson vacuum. They're on special everywhere for the same price, except for the good guys. It was a dollar cheaper. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, this is a bit useless. So then I was like, all right, well, I called around. No one would budge. Like if you buy a fridge or a TV, will budge on the price. But otherwise you want to buy this as standalone. It's yeah. already on sale. You can't get it cheaper. So like, all right. So I found David Jones is on cash rewards and there was 8% cash back. So I was like, this is $300 vacuum that I want to buy. If I can get 8% cash back, I just saved myself 24 bucks. It's on the way home anyway. Yeah. Click and collect. So all I've got to do is park in, literally walk through the doors 20 meters that way, pick it up. Yeah. And that's 24 bucks saved instead of going out somewhere else. Deal. Yeah. So just little things like that that add up. Like over it's not the course, just about the money, right? It's a win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you get, like, here's the principle though, is if, if you're you scale spending, that up. <laughs> yeah, massive. I, I, I got like 180 bucks worth over the course of a year of just mm-hmm. things that I'd accumulated. Um, yeah, even down to like shop, shopping online, like with kids, mm-hmm. cotton on kids and stuff, like 50% off in store and online. I'm like, online, cool. And then 13% cash back or something. Yeah, you can so sort of just like, guess the sizes for kids, can't you? Cool. One of them's going to grow into it. Like. Yeah, well, the kids too. <laughs> so I'll get an age two. Yeah. Thing, you know, yeah. So, yeah, spend 100 bucks and there was stuff on that. But the underlying principle is if you're going to spend money on it anyway, why not get it cheaper or spend mm. less on it? A little bit of extra effort and yeah. Yeah, and you've got more to spend on other things or, you know, to invest or do whatever you want. Do you, have, um, do you find, do you come across like certain clients where they're like, eh, can't be bothered? Like, oh, to do that sort of stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. They're just like, oh. or they're on contract with things and they're like, oh, you know, I'm on contract, I can't do it. It's all too high, Grant, come on. Just, yeah, and they're just like, you know, just the budget, that'll be right. Let's just do the big ticket items, come on. Let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when I, if I do break it down and say, look, I'm spending under 160 bucks a year on my phone and you're spending 80 bucks a month on yours mm. uh, and do you need that much data? Like, do you actually need that? Because I'm spending, what I spend in 12, you're spending in two. Yep. How many more thousands of dollars could you be saving on doing this stuff? Fairly. And then pitching it on how much time and effort do you need to invest to save to that money or yeah, to, yeah. to earn that money yep. when you can just save it? Like, yep. Do you need to work that out? Yeah, I like, the, um, I like the gross, like the translation of the what, it, like the after tax and before tax yep. element and explaining that because it, yeah, all of a sudden it dials it up a bit more. Yep. And what work you'd have to do. So, yeah, big time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I have pretty good chats about that. Yeah, good. Which is fun. When you're looking back over like the last year of kicking things off, what is there any key things that you maybe would do differently next time? Uh, I was actually speaking with someone last night about this. Um, first thing I would have done is probably put on a coach straight away. Yeah. So um, I had someone tell me earlier, they're like, yeah, even though you got a savings buffer, take out a personal loan just in case. And I know it's debt, it sucks. While well, you've got a, a, a job uh, and you can qualify for it? Or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Before you, you venture mm. out, um, you yeah. know, say maybe you're doing renovations or going on a holiday, whatever qualifies you to get the loan. Yeah. And lending criteria has probably changed now from a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, but that was a huge saving grace for you know, waiting for AMP to get me authorized and then kind of the gaps between the no income whatsoever because yeah. the savings did get chewed up. Mm. And so then I was like, oh, crap, now I've got to tap into this personal loan. But if I didn't have it, yeah, I would have probably just had to jump straight back into the employed life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was a huge thing for me. But in addition to that, yeah, probably putting on a coach earlier on to really fast track things. And instead of, you know, trial and error is great to work out what does and mm. doesn't work. But if you can get someone who has already trial and errored their way through it, can coach you through that and find what does and doesn't work with your business structure because yep. again like I was like I'm confident in my capacity as an advisor but then there was the business owner aspect I was like oh I should be right you know I did I did Tupperware back in the day ladies love a man who does Tupperware that's probably why my <laughs> wife married me my kitchen was set uh, you know Tupperware containers everywhere so we were, we were pretty good what, like, would you do the, would you do the ones where you go around to people's houses yeah man did the yeah. demos yeah yeah <laughs> Brought all my Tupperware along, and then once I stopped doing it, that's where you really refine those sales skills. Oh yeah, (laughs) that's where it was. But then yeah, got into the industry, and that's where the glorified salesman kind of yeah kicked it out of me. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you actually thought the Tupperware was more valuable than some of the other stuff that was... Yeah, and the uh, plastic was great. Yeah. <laughs> Lifetime warranty. Sort of stuff. They've changed it now. I don't know what they do now. Um, but yeah, in terms of what I'd probably do different would be... Um, yeah, probably putting the coach on straight away mm. instead of trying to push my way through things. Yeah. Um, otherwise... Um, I did find, like when I went on to AMP, I was waiting for them to authorize me. Instead of potentially trying to, to build things, I got a bit lazy and a bit mm. complacent because it just took them ages. I was constantly following them up. Um, and yeah, instead of potentially going out and having um, or joining you know, meeting groups and stuff like that, I was kind of just like, yeah, this is awesome. Family time. Yeah, you know, we're good to go. Um, you know, I'll be taking on this book. That'll, that'll provide us income and, you know, will be sorted kind of thing yep. so I do wish that I put put in more hard work sooner mm. um, so probably those two combined I think would have made a huge difference in terms of fast tracking things yeah okay but I guess I guess some of the delays and not ending up with that book um, in hindsight you're pretty you're pretty good with that uh, it was nice it was, it was a really no, good considering point. post royal commission and oh yeah I'm still alive still going yeah uh, no but with the AP <laughs> book and that sort of thing yeah 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 yeah, it all it all worked out for the best. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, my philosophy is things turn out best for the people who make the best of how things turn out. Which I like it. Yeah, it's like one of those deep, meaningful things. But mm. I read it years ago, and I was like, yeah, that's an awesome philosophy. So even though times were hard, it was like, well, let's make the most of it mm. and just kind of push through it. Which is why, you know, when I went with AMP, it was like, it's AMP, but I'll make it work. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not I'll- ideal. Yeah, I, I did have a, a negative stigma there, um, and then you know it, it it didn't turn out the way it was supposed to, and so that kind of added to that. But I was like, yeah, let's just keep keep pushing through. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's really sad what's happened with um, AMP and that network because there's some amazing yeah, advisors in that oh, network. Yeah. And, and the issue is, yeah, there's some crazy amazing advisors, and you see them in the group. Oh, look, as well. They're some of the most active in the group a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the, the sad part is that they're potentially negatively affected by this huge stigma against the company that they're authorized by, mm. which is the same thing probably for Dover. I'm sure they weren't all totally. scammers. That's all. Like in every licensee, especially a large one, you're bound to get someone who's not doing the right thing or the dealer group might slip up on something. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's the, the sad thing for them. Yeah, it's, it's nice that you've landed in a place where you're comfortable and... Yeah, a good crew, the Synchronians. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good peeps. I suppose you're dealing with uh, uh, Guy. Guy, yeah, yeah. Guy Vass, yeah, which is awesome. It's good fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, they've got the state managers all over the place. But yeah, she's been awesome as well. But um, yeah, it's been been a hell of a journey getting the business rocking and. Mm. Well, what? Uh, so we're still yeah. it's still early in the year. What, what are oh, yeah, mate, what been... are the big plans for 2019? What's uh, what you got on your plate? So that's where um, putting on Steve, for instance, has been a huge help to say, mate, what what should I be focusing on? And I'm trying to, to target my niche because really, what it was before is I was like, you know, um, I love the first time Super Saver scheme and like people in the group even tag me if there's a question. Yeah, yeah like, I know you're the, first you know, time, you're the expert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love like it. There, there's huge potential there. Yeah. Um, not to add like tens of thousands, but still yeah. thousands in tax savings and stuff like that, which could be the the breaking point of do you have your deposit um, even after a fee? You know, you could still be a few thousand better off, mm. kind of thing. Um, but he kind of was like, oh, well, that's great that you have you know great interest in that, but can they afford your services? I was like, well, kind of, but that's. Uh, you know, often they're like, "Well, I'm just trying to save for a house. I don't have to pay a couple of grand for advice, mm. just to you know, potentially see if I can be better off as a result of yeah, it." Yeah, totally. And so I was like, "All right, well, what do I potentially have an interest in, um, and what kind of clients would I ideally like to work with?" So mm. that's what we've been targeting yeah. that, and kind of boiled down to like allied health space. Okay. Um, which so we're talking nursing. Uh, yeah, I think nursing falls more under the medical okay. side, but yep. allied health and medical, so chiropractors, dentists, physios, yep. podiatrists, um, you know, osteopaths, dietitians, all that sort of space. Okay. How, how'd you get it's, to that? That's a good question. So I, I did actually, uh, I worked with a, a physio in December 
and I was like, man, my first clean skin of the year. Yeah. What's going on? Like, they take such good care of themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was like, on good money, looking after himself, um, opportunity there for advice. And I was like, you know what? There's probably other people in a similar kind of industry who are looking after themselves, earning good money, mm. but they're so caught up in their, their work that they probably don't know what to do with their finances. So I was like, here's an opportunity for me to possibly capitalize on that. Mm. Um, so now over the last few months, I've added over a thousand allied health professionals on LinkedIn and I've been having some awesome conversations and um, turning those into meetings and yeah, great. Kind of looking to obviously convert more, but it's only been a few months in. That's awesome. Um, but I'm, I'm already seeing the benefits of doing that. And before I had no idea how to do it, which again, like Steve's going to love all these pictures. That yeah, he does. You but get from time to time, you get some good ones. I know. Yeah. It's well I know ben, ben Nash. I, I yeah, Ben's as well. I was in here. I was like, oh, Steve, mate, you must be loving this. Yeah. Um, but having having conversations that aren't like, or initially adding someone, and if they see my title, like, you know, financial planner for allied health professionals, like, this guy's got an agenda. Mm. Um, so to overcome that, to have them at least connect and then go from connecting to conversation mm. and then conversation to convert. Yeah, just the steps in that. Yeah, and, and not being like, because I've had tons of like, oh, hey, thanks for connecting. Yeah. Why don't you download this guide? Um, yeah. Or why don't you do this? And it's just, you know, you know that they've just got a virtual assistant mm. doing well, it you all. Got the, yeah, and you've got the stigma. So you, you understand the risk of what, you, what you're putting out there. Yeah. Is. So, yeah, so that's been been pretty beneficial um so i think for this year focus it's going to be heavy on linkedin i think mm-hmm. and just trying to nurture those relationships um because if i can start those conversations mm. then that saves me yeah for free mm. that saves me having to try and do paid advertising and hope that yeah hope that they're actually going to click on what i'm doing whereas if i can directly engage with them then that's direct interaction and i think that's going to be more valuable than download this guide which you know will still be part of the marketing agenda i guess totally. but that's, what about uh, what about content push. what do you what do you content think? so yeah. yeah that's what i'm starting to focus on as well mm-hmm. um and getting things that are useful together to to then send out so i've got a couple of things that i've kind of worked on now it's just got to make it look pretty to then yep. put the process out there but I like think, it, and it's focused on this channel, Allied channel. Or? Yeah, well, it's it's somewhat generic okay. to a degree, but it says like if you're an Allied Health professional, um, like uh, yeah, what's what's kind of the wording? If um, yeah, if, if you're like a motivated self-employed person or uh, an entrepreneurial self-employed Allied Health professional mm. or career-minded in this industry, then this is kind of the guide to help you work through these issues. Yep. And highlighting that, and then they go, "Oh, great!" And it's enough content for them to realise that there's things that they can do, and obviously not enough for them to be like, "Great, I don't need, I don't need grant." Which was an issue I found also when I was having a lot of meetings is I had a huge education focus, which has always been a big thing. Is I want clients to make educated decisions. Yep. But I'd educate them so well that they'd be like, "Cool, yeah, appreciate that." So now I know what, what I've got to do. Yeah. And I wasn't yeah sharing the. Um, the value I guess enough for them to be like oh, I've got to work got to work with you to accomplish this yep um, would you would you what are some of the like channels for these allied health that you can start to do like more specific oh as in so, like to send the content to no to, no like to shape up more like where do you what are you thinking about some of the things that you could um, oh to, to like say that client oh uh, yeah or oh, like for cash flow for instance yep. like so essentially putting into three things is like managing your money Investing your money, protecting your money mm-hmm. is essentially your three. But how does that get um, more tailored to the? Well, to them being like, well, if you're self-employed, you may have ups and downs. So let's work out a money management plan for you to be able to ensure that you can pay your bills, still be able to invest in yourself and your business. Yep. Or if they're an employee, to say, you know, you're really well versed in managing someone's physical health, yep. mental health. I'm really good at helping people with their financial health. And it's something that a lot of yeah, people I think get the analogy is good. On. Yeah, they get distracted and they don't know what to do about it. And I'll help you, you know, find what to do better with it, kind of thing. So there's different angles and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's it's all just like it's early days. Still. Pitch it, sales. Yeah. Get in there, see how it goes. Yeah, figure out what works. That's it. But if ideally, if I can, then I'll be working with the type of client who can afford the advice, can see real benefit, 
and ideally more clean skins for the risk because totally. I do still take commissions on it. So the more clean skins I can get through, the happier. Have you contemplated um, full fee for service on insurance? Uh, contemplated. What do you What are your thoughts on? <laughs> uh, I I think where I'm at right now with cash flow in the business. Yep. Um, I mean, part of what I'm working on at the moment, again, I think with Steve is is what's called a corporate profile, which is outlining who I am, the services mm. I offer, the value of it, and giving the client the choice to say, would you rather pay for an implementation fee on getting the insurance sorted or would you rather the insurer pay me yep. to go through your applications and do all that sort of stuff? Um, so I think step one will be giving them the option yep. to say, do you want to pay to do this or would you rather just the insurance insurer pay me? I think when cash flow has better permitted and maybe if risk, you know, it's dropping down to 60. Um, 60%, yeah. Yeah, so... You reckon you're going to get squeezed out? No, not really. No? But but I do wonder, um, at that point, could I see value better in just charging a flat fee? Could could clients well, when see I, when I value? First, when I first did it. Oh, yeah, I remember you did this. Yeah. Because so this was something you did massive. First um, start was just sort of like having the conversation of both options. Yep. And it's literally like, essentially you've got to pick a figure that's going to cover, like be financial for your business. Yep. And once you pick that figure of what you need, then it's like, well, you just have, these are the two options. So you still got that channel for them to go down like that. So you're not, you're not risking that sort of thing. So you know, you don't have to go all in and go, it's only fees. But what, what you find when you look at that and you have those conversations is that you start to talk about like, you're really good. You're already really good at talking about like those savings and how they translate. Yeah. Then starting to yeah, if you eliminate the commissions out of it, yeah, and that that gets rid of your clawback risk as well. Totally, uh, I know some are like from a business you know, standpoint. I was like, especially when clawback, I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> oh, I don't have yeah. control over that. Like you can it's, influence as much yeah. as you want, but you don't have. And then what? That sets you up for not actually getting paid for what you did. And you're like, I don't like that idea. Yeah, big time. And I know others, and this is, I was thinking about that too, is others refund the commissions or rebate it back to them. Yeah, it's a but bit of a better cancel, tax. Yeah, you're caught You've with that risk. It and totally. Clawed back. It's a, it's and a better you financial a outcome you can't. when you do all the numbers, like it does, because yeah. you get, I think, the GST and that sort of thing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you've got that risk. Yeah. So I used to just dial down and just like pretty straightforward, and you're sort of sitting in front of like industry funds, and all of a sudden, retail covers like undercutting it. Yeah, massive. completely superior cover is so yeah that's my hot tip for this year yeah. <laughs> have a crack have a crack at putting side by side and just having the dual conversation that that's my hot tip yeah yeah no i appreciate it who knows where you end up i know and, <laughs> and i think yeah going down that route is the reason one of the primary reasons as well is cash flow as well where if if they are in a position where they're like look i'll pay the in- insurance and you know, pay the comms and stuff but I mean it does yeah it does even out to a degree when you you take it out so it's really working out yeah what can and can't work as mm-hmm. well and if you've got a, a big deal there for me right now I'm like awesome this you know this is essentially how I get paid from implementing your insurance mm-hmm. is through the insurer yeah. and if it's a reasonably sized policy I'll get more than potentially what I might have otherwise yeah. gotten but you know, on the flip side if I charge a fee then you've got the risk of them not seeing the value in it. So it's all over the place. Well, the, the, the thing that you can do is... Um, yeah, share, add, share with me your wisdom, man. Well, yeah, where I went down the path is like you, the, there is a bit of a correlation between um, what would traditionally be more commission for a higher policy and the requirements and the effort that goes into it. Yeah. So like you're talking pay slips, you're talking all that back and forth with the underwriters often. Yeah, because um, yeah, you've got like the nursing and all the following up around that. Once you start getting to those higher amounts... You got to do more work for it. So there's there's enough justification there for you to go. Okay, well, if like a, a, one that I came up was you just pick it on um, what's the mark of ten thousand a month or whatever. Once they go above that from an IP standpoint, all of a sudden that then goes into that um, higher cost space. Yeah. So it's 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 um, and you could label it whatever you want, but it's just you're adding that cost in. And it's got a rationale behind it because there's generally more work that goes into it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that was sort of because because yeah, the trade off when you're going well more comms like why would I do this? It's only going to pay me like three grand for doing that. Yeah, yeah. So that that's well, sort of how you start. Yeah, I've also been working with like you know just families and stuff that aren't higher incomes kind of thing as well. 
And I think that's where it's it's more difficult to potentially justify that fee when I'm like, you're both on seventy thousand dollar incomes, and yeah, they just see it as easier to just yeah, you sort of start to weigh into the super know. space and there, there's the yeah, so that's gonna be interesting. You gotta be really careful of the sole purpose test. Yeah, but there's still enough there. Like we're starting to I don't know, there's this there's, there's there's musings of uh, in X Y of. Uh, Starting to advocate for um, fully tax deductible advice as well. A bit more. Oh, yeah. Because I get asked that all the time. Because that starts. I'm like, yeah, to, your accountant can. If Shorten gets in, he'll cap it at three grand. But yeah. Well, we're, we're thinking so, of pushing a bit more for that. Yeah, that is. Be um, because, yeah, but like you require. We're registered with the TPB. Yeah, you so. require all this. Well, not even around that. Because, like, you require. Well, we're technically. You're classing us professionals. You're putting all these requirements on us. What do most professionals get? as part of like their services especially when that's related to money yeah tax deductibility so that's sort of uh, I think we think that's a reasonable request yeah and that starts to make this fee for service conversation around like for insurance etc oh that would make a massive a bit a bit from IP a bit from super from a bit from for outside yeah everything that's not IP yeah you know tax deductible on the advice versus all these other policies you can't claim anything on yep except for maybe your income protection. And then when it comes to income protection anyway is how much of that can you claim as a tax deduction? Totally. Depending on the benefits. So, exactly. yeah, man, I'll jump on board. Oh, shit. All over that. Better be careful what I say. I might start a movement. <laughs> well, yeah. Grant, man, it's been great to have you on. Like yeah, it's, um, so the business is called? Inspired Financial Planners. And if you haven't seen it, Grant's, Grant's on the Facebook group quite often. Happen to have a chat, tag him in something, especially if it's about um, the first home super saver <laughs> scheme. Um, he is the expert. Or if you've got an allied health professional that you want to send my way. Yeah, if you don't know what to do with your physio and like you think that'd be painful, Grant is the man. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I like to think anyway. Mate, it's been great to have you on. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Appreciate it.